Hi, I'm Stephen and welcome to today's video where we replace a worn out drive shaft on the right hand side of an E90 BMW. We're going to start by removing the bits in our way, use some tricks to help us work faster, and use some special tools to make the job much easier. Right, let's get to it. Not so fast. We're going to need some tools for this job that are not in a standard toolkit, and because the bolts and nut on a drive shaft are not standardised, it is a good idea to check the sizes before you start the job. For the differential end of the drive shaft, the bolts are Torx E12 size for this car, but in the workshop manual there are three different potential sizes listed just for this model, so it is definitely a good idea to check first. And on top of that, there isn't enough space to get a normal long socket onto this bolt, so you will need to search out a high quality tapered half inch socket. In order to reach these bolts, you will need some long extensions as well, and a universal joint, and also a torque wrench to do them up to the correct torque. At the wheel hub end of things, this big nut can be anything from a 28mm through to a 36mm, so make sure you get yourself a 3 quarter inch drive socket set that uses 12 point sockets, because these nuts are mostly not standard 6 sided nuts. This kind of socket set is well worth having and you will definitely use it again, and the price isn't that much in the scheme of things. I'll put a link to these tools in the description below. The big outer nut should also be tightened up to the required torque value at the end of the job, so you can either use a 3 quarter inch torque wrench, or do a little bit of mathematics to work out how to get it pretty close without a torque wrench, if you have to. We will also need a couple of big trolley jacks to safely lift the rear of the car, some wheel chocks for the front wheels, some extra chassis stands for safety, a screwdriver to stop our brake disc from turning, a big hammer and a chisel to indent the axle nut, and also plenty of light. And I almost forgot to mention the secret special tool, but we'll get to that later. BMW recommend that any drive shaft bolts and suspension bolts that are removed should not be reused, so make sure you buy a new set of bolts to connect the drive shaft to the differential, and also some bolts and nuts to replace those that are taken out of the control arm. The big axle nut should come with the new drive shaft, but it is always a good idea to make sure ahead of time. Ok, so now onto the job. First of all we need to remove the centre cap from the wheel. We'll put the car back down with the handbrake on, so we can remove the axle locking nut. We need to first bend out this part of the nut so it will turn again. Once the axle nut is removed, don't be tempted to push or hammer on the axle shaft. That will just make life difficult later, so hold that thought. While the car is still on the ground, we need to reach in with a marking pen and draw a line on the shock absorber, or damper, to indicate where the car sits at its normal ride height. You will see why this is important a little bit later. Now to lift up the car and get that wheel off and secure the car ready for work. The 
these big trolley jacks can be turned into very stable stands by inserting a big block of wood or metal under them to prevent them going down unexpectedly. Now that the car is off the ground, we can release the handbrake as we can stop the axle from turning by inserting a screwdriver through the brake caliper and into the center of the brake disc when necessary. For this car, there is no exhaust system running on the right hand side, so we don't have to remove either the exhaust system or any chassis strengthening, which saves a lot of time for this job. If you are doing the left hand drive shaft, or if you have an E90 with a different exhaust system, then you have quite a bit more work to do. In order for this job to go nice and smoothly, it's necessary to remove the control arm. It can be removed with a standard 18mm socket and extension and some 18mm spanners. When we put this control arm back in later, we need to have the suspension at normal ride height before we do the final tightening, as the joints in this arm are spring loaded and help the whole rear suspension to return to center. If you're working on an M3, then this doesn't apply to you, as an M3 doesn't use this type of joint. It's time to lock the brake disc in place using our screwdriver and feed in our socket and extensions. To stop our universal joint from just flopping down, wrap a few layers of tape around it. It is easiest if we undo the bolt that is right at the top. That way we can rest everything on top of the rubber boot. Once the first one is loosened, we can move on to the next. Once all of the bolts are removed, we can maneuver the drive shaft out of the differential. If you have a friend nearby, then get them to pull on the brake disc to give you some wiggle room, which makes it super easy. But even without a friend, it can be done without too much trouble. Now we can move to the outside and push the axle shaft through. For this I'm using a brake drum puller, as it is much nicer than hitting the axle shaft with a big hammer.
And that's it. Drive shaft is out. And here we have the new, well, remanufactured drive shaft to go in. Note that it has been made with GKN parts, which are the same components that you will find in the original BMW drive shafts. So it is the next best thing we can get to using original BMW parts. Make sure that the nut will easily go onto the thread. Trust me when I say that the best time to find out that the thread has been damaged and the nut won't go on is not after you have completely installed the drive shaft. Before we insert the axle shaft, make sure that the splines are nicely lubricated with some anti-seize grease. Now firmly push it into place, and if it refuses to go in far enough, then give it some gentle taps with a nylon dead blow hammer while rotating the brake disc. Since I can't get a camera in there, I'll show you where I am tapping the new drive shaft. Once the thread is in far enough, then the nut can be used to pull it the rest of the way. We will do the final tightening with the car on the ground, as the large torque involved is enough to potentially push the car off the stands, which is really not the best idea. If we pull on the brake disc once again, we should get enough clearance to lift the drive shaft into place on the differential. A friend is also handy to have here, but not essential. Put in our new bolts and the strangely shaped washers, and then do everything up to the required torque setting. It's not a bad idea to coat the threads with some Loctite blue compound. Turn all the bolts all the way in, ready for the final tightening with the torque wrench. Torque wrenches are not fully accurate when using extensions and universal joints, so you will have to use some judgement with this job as there is no room to get a torque wrench on these bolts without those things. 
I am dialing in an extra 10 on my torque wrench to compensate. I am doing two rounds of tightening with the torque wrench to be 100% sure. Next is to reinstall the suspension control arm with the new bolts. Before the final tightening, we will jack up the wheel hub so that the mark we made on the shock absorber earlier is indicating that we are at normal ride height. We do it this way because once the car is on the ground with the wheel on, it is pretty difficult to get any socket handle, spanner or even yourself anywhere near this part of the suspension. And there you can see the mark we made earlier. Tighten the control arm to the torque listed for your car. Put the wheel on without the centre cap. Drop the car down onto the ground. and put on the handbrake. Tighten to the correct torque if your torque wrench goes up high enough. If not, then you'll have to do an estimate based on the length of the lever and how much you are pushing down.
Now to turn the nut into a locking nut. All done. Just a reminder that there are links to all of the tools seen in this video in the description below. If you've done this job and think there is an improvement that can be made of this process, then please don't be shy. Let me and everyone else know so that we can all improve how we do things. If you liked this video, then please give it a like. And if you think your friends might like it too, then please share it with them. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, then please consider hitting that subscribe circle. Until next time.